Welcome to another shear moment diagram example. In this video, we're gonna look at this cantilevered beam, but this time, instead of doing things graphically, we're gonna use an equation approach. So we're gonna come up with the equations for the internal shears and internal moments and use those to plot our shear and moment diagrams. So this is the equation approach. So the very first thing I did was actually go ahead and draw our free body diagram. And I already computed the reactions here at A. If you want to know how I come up, came up with these reactions, you can watch the previous two videos. But just to make things a little bit more concise, I just drew them in and I wrote them in as such. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and draw our shear diagram and we're gonna do this using an equation approach. And remember, we come up with equations for spans that have consistent loading or no loading at all. So things between point loads or places where there's loads that stop and start again. So in this case, we just have nice even loading all the way from A to B. So we can go ahead and take a cut anywhere in this span, just some random distance. And I can go ahead and draw that portion of the beam. So here is point A, here is our 60 Newtons. Then we have our MA, which is 360 newton meters then we have our distributed load that goes all the way across to that cut and here at our cut which is located a distance x from a from point a we have our internal shear going down which is going to be v of x right so our positive sign convention for the right side of a cut is shear going down and the moment would be going counterclockwise so this is m of x and again this distance right here is just a some distance x so since this beam is in static equilibrium, every portion of that beam should also be in static equilibrium. So we can use our equations of equilibrium here for this portion of the beam and come up with what our shear should be or what our shear is going to be in equation form. So if I take the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero at that cut and I say up is going positive, then I have the 60 newtons here, right, up, and then I have minus five newton per meter times this distance distance, which is x, and then finally this shear going down. So this is minus v of x, and that is equal to zero. And if I do the math, I get v of x is equal to 60 minus 5x newtons. So the shear of this span in equation form is 60 minus 5x. So that means we can plug in any value of x between a and b and come up with the corresponding shear that is at that location. So if I did v of 0, so x is equal to 0, so right at the start at point a, we would get 60 minus 5 times 0, and that is 60 newtons. So the shear at point 0 at 0 is 60. 60 right there so the shear is and then if I did V of X equals 1 so 1 meter over to the right of a so somewhere over here I would get 60 minus 5 times 1 is equal to well 60 minus 5 is 55 newtons so the shear at this point is 55 newtons well, what about closer to the end so let's say X is equal to 10 Right, this is a 12 meter span, so probably somewhere over here. What is the shear there? Well, it's gonna be 60 minus five times 10, right, x is 10, and 60 minus 50 is 10 newtons. So somewhere over here, the shear is 10 newtons. And then finally, how about at the very end? x is equal to 12. Well, 60 minus five times 12 is equal to zero, right? Because five times 12 is 60, and 60 minus 60 is zero newtons. So it closes out right there at zero. And if you look at this equation, you'll notice that the x term is raised only to the first power. So we can clearly see that our shear diagram is going to be linear. And you can also see that this equation is in slope intercept form. So the term in front of the x, the coefficient is a negative five. It's a negative number. So we know that our slope is going to be negative. So if I went ahead and drew in that shear diagram, it should look something like that. Cool, so this is a positive shear. All right, in the next part, we're actually gonna look at the moment diagram. So we're gonna come up with the equation for this term right there, and we'll use that to plot our moment diagram. So see you then.